Without further ado, it's time to introduce my first guest of the evening. It's none other than filmmaker Naeem Mahmood. How you doing, man? Very good, very good. Really good to be here as well, back in Hackney, because funny enough, the movie was kind of born yeah. over here. Yeah, it started off from a youth centre in Hackney and then grew into this massive, massive thing. So it's good to be back here. Excellent. Well, you're more than welcome. Um, so for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So yeah, my name's Naeem Mahmood and I'm a director. Brash Young Turks is my debut feature which just had a cinema release in the UK. It's going to be premiering on London Live May the 21st. So directing, making films, that's what I've been doing since school. Yeah. Just to bunk off, yeah. You know, the whole school thing, being uninspiring and boring. Right. And that thing already in schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, yeah, breaking out of there, grabbed hold of a few riffraff mates from the neighbourhood and just started making <laughs> movies, you know. Amazing. Give them some direction. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, man. So you've been in the, you've been in the game for a minute now. Um, what what other stuff have you worked on already? Is there anything out there that people might have heard of or, or that can go check out? Well, I started, a lot of the work I've done was in television, so that's where I gained a lot of my experience. I yeah. worked in ITV, I worked on Pop Idol at the time, Graham Norton show, and kind of gained my experience of how the industry works, the mechanics of it. What, what kind of stuff were you doing on, on those shows? I worked as a researcher, as a stage manager, so working behind the scenes on the shows in the studio. Even in the green room as well, I remember, mm -hmm. what was it? Uh, this is going really back in the day. I yeah. even worked on Blind Date when I was is like, it? when I was a kid, yeah. It so is. I'd be waiting in the green room you know, for all the losers. You know? black here. <laughs> Damn, that's, that's some classic TV. I know, so I kind of re <laughs> <laughs> really worked my way up from there. But I always wanted to do my own independent thing and make movies, my own movies, because I kind of felt like the UK is not really hitting the high notes when it comes mm -hmm. to cinema. You know, you see like Brazil making City of God, you see you know, America making stuff like Pulp Fiction, France making La Haine. So I kind of felt that UK weren't really reaching those heights. So I wanted to kind of bring something new to the table, something fresh. That's definitely something that I want to, want to talk about a little bit later, because that, that's, that's clear. In the, in the little snippets that I've seen, it's, it's clear that that's kind of, uh, kind of the, the direction that you're going in. Um, so you, you, kind of, you say you got, you got into filmmaking from pretty early. Yeah. Was there like a specific film that you watched one day that, that really touched you and made you think kind of like, was, was there a, a moment where you were like, I, I want to I wanna have that impact on people. I want to make people sort of feel something in a way that cinema does, you know, to you. Funny enough, it was, I used to be big into horror. So when I was like a kid, like a little you, I used to collect all these little horror films on VHS. Yeah, so. I remember watching Evil Dead. I think my cousin must have locked me up and made me watch the original Evil Dead when I was like seven. I think she was going on a hot date or something. So she just locked me and said, watch this film. And I just found that whole experience just mad. You know, like when you want to kind of not watch it, but then you like, you want to watch yeah, it. You know? Yeah, 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 totally. Like through, like from behind the pillow, through the, through the gaps. Yeah, exactly, fingers, totally. exactly. Yeah. And that film was like a drug fueled horror trip of a ride. So. Crazy. I was just hooked onto that and since then I just wanted to make movies. And then later on I kind of got into stuff like Alan Clark, you know, films like Scum, you know, the classics. Right, right. Scum and then some stuff and what was it, um, The Firm, and Made in Britain and stuff like that. Mm. And then it kind of went on to some of Scorsese's early stuff, stuff like The Goodfellas, sure, and Casino sure. and all of those classics. So, yeah. so all, all very like um, creative from a production standpoint as well, like especially with those early films you named, like a lot of those kind of, they were doing a lot on the yeah. modest kind of budget that they had. Is that is that something that you kind of, yeah. um, you know, sparked an interest in yourself? Absolutely. Or? I think there was a whole big movement in the 90s, you know, <laughs> in the UK and internationally, you know, with stuff like Train Spotting. Yeah. There was a film called Once Were Warriors, a New Zealand film from the nineties which I've watched which I watched and all of these films are kind of doing things on a slight, you know, smaller budget. It's not the big sort of Hollywood spectacles, but they were making these powerful films, you know, you know social realism and all that, but yeah. with coming from different angles. So that certainly inspired me and, you know, I just wanted to pick up a camera and just do stuff, you know. And as I said earlier, you know, going to school and all of that stuff was just not really making any impact on me. Sure. So, but when you do, when you grab a camera, that's how you can really express yourself, get constructive, and then suddenly maths becomes exciting because you're making a budget. Do you know what I mean? Right. So, you saw the use, the use of those yeah, skills. So, yeah. You know, and then the whole hustle element of it, because in the UK, the industry, you know, they're not going to give you anything. No. You know, if you want to make cutting edge stuff and progressive stuff, you've got to hustle. Mm. So, um, growing up in West London, I knew you had to do that anyway. So I just, <laughs> We're about to in West London, so you I grew up in Labrook Grove. My dad had a little okay. shop on Portobello Road back in the day, like in the 80s and 90s. And that was, I remember it as a little kid, it was yeah. a mad scene of hippies and 
and you know Portuguese community, Rasta community, Moroccan community and the arts, it was crazy. And I think that's where I get a lot of my colourful, bold, vibrant filming style from, sure. influences from, whether I know it or not. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. Sometimes it's a, it's a subconscious thing, isn't it? But you, you, you soak in those things around you, especially at a young age. Um, so we're here mainly today to talk about yeah, this very exciting film that's coming up very soon um, called Brash Young Turks. Um, so tell us a little bit, what, what, is, what does this mean for a start and, and what, what's the film about, what's the uh, sort of idea behind it? Definition of a young Turk is someone that rebels against authority, someone that rebels against societal expectations and doesn't follow what someone tells them to be or do. They create mm. their own identity, they carve out their own character. And that's essentially the term brash on text. I kind of came across it in a business magazine, I think it was, which described these new young movers and shakers right. who were changing the way things done, hook or by crook, by any means necessary. <laughs> okay, okay, do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So that's where the, the Young Turks term came from. And then the brash was all about, I wanted to make a film about young people who were not just stuck in the hood, but were looking to kind of transcend that right. and find their own identity, but do it with real swagger, hustle, and rise up the so-called food chain, you know? For sure, for sure, yeah. man. Um, so who does the film sort of focus on? Obviously, you don't want to give too much away, but who's, who's like... Multiple characters. It's, the film is very much about a gang of daring young go-getters and mm. hustlers, and it's like it follows the intertwining stories of these characters. But the main focus is on um, Terrell, who's this flamboyant young hustler who's just rising up the ranks fast right. and he's, he's moving into the higher echelons of society yeah, and yeah, causing yeah. trouble. And then you've got Mia, who's uh, a young girl from a care home, but who's looking to f who's looking to find her own independence and do her own thing and not just shake her booty in a hip hop video. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, yeah, totally. so she's, a, she's a very empowered character. So those are the sort of main characters of the movie. A lot of kind of um, relatable Absolutely, absolutely. Then. But having said that, I didn't want to make a realist drama or you know, sure. a social drama. I wanted to add almost kind of like a fantasy element to it. I see. To, so to some degree, Brash Young Turks is very much an urban fantasy. Yeah. Except yeah. you don't see little hobbits running around. You see like <laughs> characters that you can relate to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for so sure, for sure. That's, that's the difference. That's sick. That's, that sounds amazing. So, and there's a lot of kind of fresh new faces in this as well. Yeah. Um, some very like young actors in here as well who how young were sort of the youngest, the youngest members of cast the you're looking around about 14 15 years old because we did like a flashback scene where you see the protagonists 10 years earlier so yeah those actors were about 14 15 right. and um but regardless of the age i had to put them through a certain process you know because I, I wanted to know yeah how did you kind of seek you know seek yeah. these people out and, and go about auditioning them and stuff like that well, it all started from this youth centre in Hackney and we put out open casting calls to people not just from the local area, but just wired across London and from yeah. various agencies, Star Now, and just contacting people through certain people, drama schools, colleges, everything. I mean, we must have had about 500 people who turned up to that centre yeah, to audition. Yeah, really? A lot, of, a lot of hungry young um, people. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's but, amazing. you know, once we got into the whole, once we cast the characters, I had to put, for, put them through a relentless process, literally spending several weeks in the rehearsal room and really pushing them out of their comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah, because I'm sure a lot, a lot of them hadn't ever acted yeah. before, right? No, no, first yeah, experience. There, was, there was a lot of first-time actors, mixed with seasoned actors as well. And, yeah, yeah. But yeah, a lot of new actors. So, so how, how do you feel, with, like, especially with the, with the new younger members of cast, how do you feel going through that, that process with them, guiding them through their first acting experience? How did that kind of benefit the film and like the end, end product? I kind of felt like an Alex Ferguson to some degree, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. And, you know, these were the Fergie's boys to some degree, sure, you know. Sure, sure, But right. um, So it was that kind of, you know, it was also about mentoring them. And it was more than just the film as well. I wanted to see these people kind of break out of the box and, mm. and think bigger. Yeah. And that kind of refle reflected in the film because the characters in Brash Young Turks are thinking outside the box. They want more than what's handed to them, sure. you know. So it was the same process in terms of the rehearsals. So now it was literally putting them through their paces and pushing them out of their comfort zone because I wasn't just settling for the usual standard cliched characters. Yeah. And luckily one or two of their, you know, their parents were on side because we had to put them through some harsh stuff. You know, there's, some gr <laughs> there's a few gritty scenes in there, I'm not yeah, going to lie. Yeah, so, no, totally. you know, we couldn't mess around. It had to be very authentic. You absolutely, know? absolutely. And you spoke um, a minute ago about some of the more seasoned actors uh, involved in the mix. Who, who are some of those guys? Well, we had a couple of old school actors in there. There's a guy called Julian Glover, CB. 
E, who's in there. He was the Bond villain back in the day. Indiana Jones. He's in Game of Thrones at the moment. He was in Star Wars as well. Wow. So having him and then see, he's a proper veteran, old school actor, Olivier Award winning actor. Yeah, yeah. And, he's, <laughs> and seeing him with these like youth, you know, we've never acted before yeah. was, was a mad mix. And then we had other people from all kinds of spectrum. There's grime legend DWE makes a cameo right, in the movie right, as well. Right. And you probably won't even recognize him. We pushed him out of his comfort Really? Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, he, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah, that. Yeah, he actually. plays some kind of like some crafty inside estate agent property dealer. So Sick. you won't even recognize him. He's got these mad spectacles and everything. So it's not how, you know, the DWE that you Dino, expect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but it was a blast working with him as well. And then there's people from, you know, you, people you recognize from stuff like Skins and a lot of television stuff as well. And sure. All of that kind of thing. Nice so. one. There's so, even a little cameo from the mayor of London. I don't know if he's still the mayor now because I know the elections are coming oh out. But God, Boris yeah, Johnson, a little like cameo today. from him as well. Oh, maybe so. former. <laughs> maybe that might be like the last bit of, last bit of uh, footage of him as the, as the mayor. I uh, know. We'll have to wait and see. Won't be able to plug that one. Anyway. No, no, yeah. <laughs> Um, so not only are there some some standout performances, but there's also some very memorable locations that you, you filmed in as well. Sure. Um, where were some of the best places that you shot? Oh, there was, there was too many. I mean, the obvious ones are Notting Hill Carnival, you know, just getting in the midst of 500,000 people for two days filming this epic carnival adventure between the two characters. That scene was just over two was over. It two was days. shot over two days. Wow, yeah, we yeah. had to spend full two days and nights at carnival to, because I wanted to really get immersed in the middle of the carnival because I saw other people filming carnival from the outskirts, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Scared to kind of go in, whereas get I wanted in. to go in. And I knew carnival, the whole from the back of my head because I grew up there so we literally got these hold of these media passes hustled them and then just went everywhere and and shot this epic scene it was all, almost to some degree it's kind of like a carnival musical that sequence yeah, it's mad yeah, it's yeah. mad that's amazing but um so that was epic yeah also shooting on top of the heron tower on sushi sambo which is europe's highest outdoor restaurant this very sort of glamorous location so shooting oh, there overlooking the city mean. was yeah it was beautiful and getting permission for that was mad as well i literally turned up there suiting and booted a couple of times to find the manager in person yeah and then i finally did and just got hold of him and said look man you know you need to be part of this epic movie because this is showing london in a completely different light right you guys need to associate associate yourself yeah. with this so you need to get on it so so with that in mind what um oh just quickly for I, I, I gotta say that um just with you mentioning city of god there's that that yeah. scene that i've seen on the beach yes that was amazing and that that took me there like as soon yeah. as i saw that, that that reminded me of that just the the yeah. feeling i got from it where where was that that you filmed now that would be telling that would be telling uh, <laughs> actually yeah, a lot of yeah people think that that's the bahamas or the looks, mediterranean but bro, i'm not brilliant. gonna lie it is in the uk it's in cornwall and um it was a place that i discovered funny enough in my late teens and um mm. how that happened is like, I literally wanted to kind of get out of West London and try and explore and get to places. And I stumbled across this mad beach that looks like something out of the Mediterranean. Crazy. You wouldn't even think that it no. was in the UK. No, you really wouldn't. It's, yeah. it's mad. It's crazy. So I was like, I've got a film here one day. And then when the whole Brash and Turks thing came up, I said, we've got to shoot down there. And that whole scene is about these two characters seeing a bigger world beyond, you know, that there's sure. a bigger world than just London. There's a whole world out there. With, and if you can branch out and think big, you know, you can really broaden your horizon. So yeah, that's what yeah. that beautiful sun-kissed beach sequence is about. Right, and, right. But to get there, Courtney, was a mission. <laughs> Trust me. I mean, it was like a 10-hour coach journey. No sleep on the coach with the oh, actors. Oh. So they, we had, then we had to climb these cliffs and coastal paths to get there. Oh, right. It was mad. And, and then, then we had to shoot. And then I was going to say, then, and then they've got to get into character. Yeah, they've, they've got, got to, like... Absolutely. And they had no sleep on. or nothing. So to do that, you know, and I remember a lot of people saying, don't... You know, there's one or two stiff producers who were like, don't go to the beach, you've got to shoot in a, just shoot locally in a bar over here. And I'm kind of like, can't, that's it's not gonna, the whole purpose yeah, of yeah, yeah, what yeah, the totally, movie's totally. about. So just pushing the boat out and taking chances and luckily the sun was shining because if it wasn't, it would have looked gl Imagine. grim. <laughs> Imagine. I bet you'd have made it work somehow. Though. But that is, yeah, that yeah. is, that, it seems ideal the way, the way it panned yeah. out. Um, so talking more about, you know, uh, you kind of like um, showing London in this sort of different light. What, what was the what was the relevance of kind of like portraying the city in in the way that you have? I wanted to show London in a much more hyper stylized reality, and that simply reflects the mind state of the characters. Mm. The characters are ambitious, they're go getters, they're hustlers who are looking to transcend their class. So I wanted I wanted London to reflect their mind state, which is a lot more colourful, it's a lot more vibrant, it's a lot more stylish. 
and it's different. It's not the cliched locations that we usually accustomed to seeing in British films. You know, the council estate and then the Canary Wharf skyline. Of course. I wanted to create something a lot more authentic and almost bring a fantasy element to it and turn London, transform London into this hyper stylized city that's there for the taking. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's nice. Um, so, as we were saying before, like there's a lot of films that they, they kind of show London, especially youth culture within London, um, in a certain way and, and don't always seem to get it right, yeah. as, as you kind of like touched on before as well. Uh, this, is, this is very apparent for anybody yeah. who watches any kind of like any stuff like that. Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think people do kind of just get it wrong where they can't portray it in, in the way that maybe they intend to? I think it's very, very simple. I think the key thing is that people, are, a lot of people I come across, a lot of creatives, a lot of them are afraid to branch out. Mm. You know, they stick into these small sort of barriers where they have to conform to this because that's what the industry wants or that's how it's on the that's how it is on the street or whatever. I think you've got to be a little bit daring, push the boat out a little bit, take some chances, do something different. You know, and I hear this thing where we want to see stuff that's real. Personally, for me, I don't want to make films that are just real. We can see realness in everyday life. Do you mm. know what I mean? I think film... And cinema is a medium that is meant to take you places or get you thinking or dreaming or escape. Looking. From escape is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's why a lot of the films, you know, they're not really hitting the high notes because they stick into the same old cliches and falling into the same trap. And it's like, oh, I'm thinking outside the box, but you're only moving an inch. Do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, it's totally, like, totally. It sounds like you've you've gone totally the other way you've done something really really innovative here so um absolutely and also bearing in mind you know the film you know we didn't have no industry backing and even though yeah. trust me the film yeah, you've seen you know you've seen it it looks a million dollars it's, it's yeah, very yeah, grand yeah. it's very colorful vibrant over 50 locations but we didn't have no real finance there was no real industry backing mm. there was no industry that was interested in seeing all these multicultural characters yeah but race is not an issue or class is not an issue sure you know so we started off in a youth center in hackney and just made this film with not even a script we started off with literally a concept really and then used that to just improvise and create the story through improvisation so it's literally like either you're going to make this film or you're going to go back to your day job what's it going to be is that something that you have you ever tried that that strategy before that approach Yes, I did. I did that in some of my short films and I just found the whole improvisation process to be a lot more organic. Yeah. It's not to say that you don't have a script, but you have a concept. And then when you see the, the actors bring that to life in front of your eyes, then you start to get immersed into it and then you can push it here, push it there, move it there. And it starts to it starts to become a lot more creative. Yeah, it's more malleable. You can, totally, yeah, yeah. Totally. I, can ima I can imagine. It's that. not rigid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes so much sense, man. Um, so I want to talk actually loads more about the, the production process. Um, but first, you've actually brought along a little surprise with you today in the form of the, the theme track, like the, yes. the main song of, of the soundtrack, um, which is performed by DW. That's right. As you mentioned, he had a, he's got yeah. a part in the film. He's in there. Yeah. How, how did that collaboration come, come about, though? How did, he, how did you get him on board? DWE, I was introduced to him by um, a group of artists called Empirical K. Yeah. And um, they, Empirical K saw Brass Young Turks, an early cut of it, and they just fell in love with the movie, and they said, you've yeah. got to meet DWE. You know, so when D Double saw the movie, he was straight away, he was like, Kazi, <laughs> I want a cameo in this. You know? Is it? He was just on it. <laughs> has, he, has he done any acting before? I can't um, even think. Not that I'm aware of. He was in Shank. I think it was I the Shank. The shank. Um, yeah, oh, he, yeah, 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 that that yeah. club scene. Right? But he, yeah. that's right. But he wasn't acting; he was just performing, being himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dido was like, "Cause he give me, you know, a part in this," and I was like, "Okay." And he was like, and he was up for the whole thing of doing something different, not not just turning up as D Double E. That's good. Yeah. And um, so that, and then once we started working together, we just clipped, and then it led to the theme track of the movie, which uh, we worked with Double and he put together. And it also features a new young talent called Hava. Mm. And basically what we did is we did a competition where we gave a singer the lucky opportunity to be part of the track oh, and jump really? on board with Double. Yeah. And that was done through Urban Development. And she won the competition and then she jumped on board the track as well and, and done the singing. And, and yeah, so that's it's how well, it feels. Well deserved came. as well because she, she smashes it. She sound, sounds great yeah. on this track. And um, this is a song called Empire. That's right. That's um, right. Where, when, when and where can people... 
you know get their hands on this. the music video is going to be coming out uh, in a couple of weeks time it will be coming out on grime daily nice. and then it's going to be coming on all the usual platforms itunes and all of that so i'm very very excited for it to come out Sick. are there any other songs on the, the video soundtrack? by the way is going oh, to be good. epic we even shot a sequence you with double and harris say, oh, are you, oh is it yeah yeah so nice, the music nice. video is you directed really epic. that as well yes i did yes i did nice, nice. and we filmed in some mad places in savile row and paris yeah. and I, I can't wait for that to come out very different very, so the visuals more have, cinematic. have that yeah right uh, they have that coherency with the film then it's kind absolutely of, it was like part of the package sort of thing. totally totally that's banging i can't wait to see that um, are there any other songs on the soundtrack that uh, there's yeah there's lots of stuff i mean there's things uh, there's tracks from shysty nice. uh there's stuff from skinny man and, and even some old school stuff like the cool notes which was an old funk band in the 80s had chart success all, all legends in their own right absolutely incognito yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a real uh, mixture and then new talent as well a lot of new talent in terms of the music on there as well so sick, sick. nice one well let, let's get into this track uh, and then we'll be back right after to conclude the interview this one right here is Empire by DWE featuring Haver. You can hold me back, there's no way I'm looking back. I'm gonna elevate myself to higher heights. I don't do no nine to five on the hustle day and night. Until I get it right, it ain't easy. I'm running from the postcode on my back. There's no holding me back, there's no holding me back. back, back. We be holding it down, don't fall on the ground, come to fall, ain't no stopping now, ain't no stopping now, ain't no stopping now, ain't no stopping now, never thought we'd be here, live your life with no fear, come to fall, ain't no stopping now, ain't no stopping now, ain't no stopping now, ain't no stopping now, put the butt butt. I'm building my empire, my dream, my desire. Holding a torch, I'm holding a fire. Let's make the stakes higher. I'm in the beat, needs cooking up a fire. Blowing out hot air like a hair dryer. Up on a hot hair, call me sire. Hot like chips in a fryer. Just like a bird, I'm a high flyer. Change the game and make them admire. That's my craft. You don't want to cross my wire. You don't want to cross my path. I'm gonna go on like walk one higher. I just walk past them and laugh. Gotta be smart, gotta be wise. Always got my hands in them other pies. I've never been no waste like them other guys. I'm like that early morning time. I'm on the rise. We're coming through like them bulldozers. We used to drive before, now we got chauffeurs. From young, I was rolling with them wise olders. My head screwed on and I'm from the We be holding it down, don't fall on the ground. Come to fall, ain't no stopping down. I'm smarter than required. There's no holding me back. There's no holding me back. No, there's no holding me back. I'm starting a riot. There's no time to be slack. I've come too far to look back. I don't want to hear none of that. I've got my head screwed on. 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 We be holding it down. Don't fall on the ground. Come to fall. Ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now. Never thought we'd be here, live your life in no fear. Come too far, ain't no stopping us. Ain't no stopping us. Ain't, ain't no stopping us. Ain't, ain't no stopping us. Ain't, ain't no stopping us. Rash, young, talks, talks. Rash, young, talks, talks. Rash, young, talks, talks. Young, talks, young, talks. Rash, young. Tugs, tugs, brash, young, tugs, tugs, brash, young, tugs, tugs, young, tugs, young, tugs. I'm 
right there, Empire by DWE featuring Hava, the theme song taken from the upcoming film, Brash Young Turks, by filmmaker Naeem Mahmood, who's actually in the studio with me right now. We've been having a little interview about the, the whole film. And actually, I wanted to talk about the, the production process a little bit. How how long was this in total from like inception to actually you know finishing the, the project? About four years. Four years. Yeah, yeah. You know, as Tony says, it's not duck walk out there, man. <laughs> it, you know, to put you know to put a feature film together, especially your first debut feature, and yeah. like I said, when you're starting off from a youth center in Hackney and doing something grand, it takes time. Mm. So you've got to have stamina, and you have to you got to think long term. You For know, sure. it's not going to happen overnight. And I see a lot of young filmmakers and creatives; they just want things to happen quick, quick, quick. Yeah, you know, yeah. but you know, you have to look at the long, the, the big picture. Well, it's how everybody perceives it. Everyone seems, yeah. you know, people don't see the whole yeah. story. They don't see the long grind. That, that yeah. They just see the, the final thing and perhaps Absolutely. don't appreciate how long it no, actually does take. No. But, you know, time is just an illusion at the end of the day, man. And I think right. if you can make time stand still, you know, yeah, yeah, then, yeah. then it's all good. So, but, you know, we spent like a year in the rehearsal room, auditioning, developing the story. And, you know, there's a whole load of characters, about three, four hundred cast in this film. So, wow, you know, and it's massive. So it took time. Yeah. And then production, you know, shooting in almost up to 50 locations, going to these faraway beaches, carnivals, you know, to do it properly and on, on, and on a high level. Uh, you know, and working with new talent as well, it, it took time. I bet, I bet, so. man. Did you sort of see, did you oversee every aspect of it? Is there some stuff you could kind of be like, okay, that's in good hands, I'm going to leave that to you. <laughs> or is it, it's hard when it's your baby, right? No, like, I'm a bit of a dictator. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> but no, I had to kind of oversee things because I was working with a team as well. A lot of them were inexperienced, you know, a lot of them were newcomers. Yeah. Right, and, right. And because we were doing it on a, on a very small budget, I had no choice but to overlook certain things. So overlooking the costumes, the style, you know, the, the production design, and sure music and, you know, but also delegating things and working with creatives together. Filmmaking is very much, you know, a collaborative process. It's not like a painting, you go and, you know, do it by yourself. It's, you've got to work with a lot of people and get the best out of them. That's yeah, the key yeah. thing. So it's very much about working with talent and, and bringing the best out of them to, to contribute to the, the overall picture. But yeah, I'm always overseeing stuff and looking into every sort of element and aspect, you know. Absolutely. And what was um, what was sort of the hardest part of the whole process? Was there any sort of big obstacles that you had to overcome that kind of stick out in your mind? Like, I can't believe we, we got around that or any, you know what I mean, anything like that? I think um, the overall um, whole process of the film, you know, in the UK, there's not much support for stuff like this. It's not like I was watching this documentary the other day of Spike Lee's Do The Right Thing mm. and the making of. And um, it's amazing how the whole community, the whole area, everyone got behind the movie. Right, right. Whereas yeah. in the UK, people are still very much segregated or locked into their own worlds. And so that challenge and then there's not no real industry support because the industry is very elitist yeah you know especially when you're doing a film like this and starting out so that whole challenge of wanting to do something grand and not just make a little film that's in your room or in the local neighborhood and that's it venturing out to all these places is you know it's a big ask so that in itself was a challenge and you know and then getting stopped by police all the time you know not yeah. filming in certain places but just overcoming that you know, getting the, the costume as well. A lot of the costume I would go to like major designer shops and buy it and then refund it. So I'd spend like uh, 500 right. pound or 1,000 pound on just a, a glamorous blazer for Terrell yeah. <laughs> for his character because he's a flamboyant um, character. So sure. I would have to go and then, then refund it and just hustle, you know. So yeah, yeah, all of these challenges. Then filming like in the carnivals and these beaches and getting to these places and all of this was a major major challenge and then working with new talent long hours you know four in the morning and non-stop you can't take your foot off the gas otherwise you're down and out so was there any extra funding or was it all was it all just think you just had to make it work Did there was some ways? we got some small pockets of funding from an organization called inspire which is based in hackney just around the corner from here and okay. they basically work with developing you know young people when it comes to education business and all that sort of thing so mm. Um, I hooked up with them and they put a small, very little, but they put something in, which was amazing. And then this youth center in Hackney gave us this space and they were like our studio. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, so, so, um, so we managed to get some small funding, but n nothing, nothing near the kind of, you know, half mil sort of 500,000, 1 million pound budget that a lot of people have valued, valued the film to well, be. It really takes. Oh, right, yeah, right, right. So nothing near that. You know? Yeah, no, of course. And how, how would you say this, uh, the whole experience kind of compares to 
previous projects that you've either led or, or you know been a part of first of all getting it done you know yeah. it's kind of like apocalypse now you know seeing the whole end of the journey coming all the way through <laughs> is that in itself is a buzz it's an achievement and it's it's hardened me and right. toughened me up even more uh, you know i was very tough before anyway yeah, so yeah, yeah. this experience has only you know boosted my confidence and made me a lot more dangerous <laughs> yeah for you know, sure once you can get it done and come through against the odds then you know you can feel unstoppable you prove you know, something really? to yourself don't yeah, you really absolutely anyway. absolutely so what what would you say is sort of the main lesson that you've learned like the main you know thing that you'll take away from the whole process the key thing is and again you know to share this with other creatives as well and it, it might sound a bit cliched but um you've got to have thick skin and you can't mm. take no for an answer right you know putting aside all the technical things and all the filmmaking you know technical side of stuff and the end of the day when you're doing something like this it comes down to having that thick skin because you're yeah. going to get a lot of lot of knockbacks all the time and it's all about how can you bounce back from that sure. and how can you keep going yeah. so in a sense we were brash young turks making the movie right you know, the right. whole process of the ma making the that, film was yeah that it, ideology totally <clears throat> that's sick and then um, as you said before a little bit about how you know um you know you can't stress enough to the, these young and upcoming filmmakers that it you know it won't happen overnight you've got to graft and all this is there is there any other sort of key uh, pieces of advice that you would give to anybody who's wanting to to do what what you've done one of the key things for me is that you you've got to watch out for distractions right there's a lot of distractions out there nowadays you know with you know social media tv this that the other and a lot of these things, you know, subliminally are pulling you away from your talent. You know, at the end of the day, making music or making films and, you know, it's a craft. So you've got to spend time and train, you know. There's other people in the higher echelons of creativity who are training all the time. You know, there's actors in Arada who are getting paid and, you know, or whatever, you know, to train. So some people don't have that luxury. So you've got to train, you know, kind of like Rocky does, you know, in, in, in the creed. <laughs> the, Do you know what the I mean? Montage, yeah, like, exactly. The old yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you got to watch out for these distractions because a lot of these distractions can pull you away. You're constantly on your phone all the time, just looking. Duh, duh, duh. Right. you, you got to spend time in your craft. So get that phone and use it to shoot stuff. Get out there, get your friends, people together and make it happen and spend time on that and watch out for those things that are pulling you away and, and, and not making your mind, not allowing your mind to focus. Yeah, man. No, that's, that's so true. And that goes for like so many different, do you know what I mean, types of... Uh, you know creative processes as well like you can easily apply that to music and, and everything else you know it's like Absolutely. the amount of distractions around us in you know in this yeah. day and age is ridiculous Absolutely. um so you touched on this before um but who wh where's the film been screened so far How how's the reception been the reception has been fantastic i think that people are just really pleased to see a film that is fresh and progressive right. and that goes against the typical cliches and stereotypes that we're so used to seeing so we've had a cinema release in the uk we've got the television premiere coming up on london live so london get ready okay, you can so check out the film on london live everyone can check it out there and then is it's that, on is that like the is that the, the grand opening type thing is that for like tv the, yeah the absolutely okay. so and that's the tv premiere where everyone can watch it and then it's on to DVD, iTunes, Google Play, and cool. you know, and people can check it online as well if nice you miss one. it on TV. Nice and, but having said that, we've always got screenings in various cinemas still going on. So, for example, tomorrow we've got uh, we've got tomorrow we've got a screening at the London College of Communication, which is being hosted by University of University of the Arts of London and Diversity Matters, and that's tomorrow. Um, there's a drinks reception and it's free. Oh. So there's an opportunity to come and meet with me. I'm going to have a discussion about diversity in British film and media, or the lack of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And because um, Brash Art Turks is a very progressive film when it comes to the so-called cliche diversity tag as well. So okay. definitely come join me for a discussion, for drinks, and, and come and see the movie and get inspired. Sick. And um, you're, you're pretty active on the social media. You've got a few few pages set up around yeah. the release of the movie. Um what are all those and what, what can people expect? What are you going to be posting? Is it going to be like reminders of when and where to see we've it? Got, like we've got some really cool stuff coming out. So on Twitter, we're at Brash Young Turks. On Facebook, it's Brash Young Turks Movie. My Instagram is Naeem Director. 
and we've got some really cool stuff coming out. For example, we've got this um, comedy spoof trailer coming out, <laughs> which stars this um, YouTuber called Jake Wardle, who did this video called The 24 Accents, the English language in 24 oh, accents. Oh, accents. okay. I've and it just, seen that. it must have got like 25 million hits or something. Yeah, and he yeah. done it in his back room and he played all these, he done all these multiple characters. So we got him to play multiple characters in this spoof trailer like a taking the piss trailer yeah, yeah. you know where people are having heart attacks while they're watching Rashan Turks because it's so damn good yeah yeah <laughs> <All> that silliness <laughs> but that's going to be a lot of fun and that's going to hit a lot of people as well but yeah so look out for that we've obviously got the music video to come out and then there's all sorts of events you know like the diversity thing as well which is a lot more interactive you know where people can not just come see the film but talk about filmmaking and and being creative and how you can get your shit off the ground, you know. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. That that's what it's about. Sick, nice one, man. Well, bro, thank you so much for coming down. Really, really appreciate it. It's been amazing to talking to you about you know your journey and, and the film and everything. As you brought along the the poster as well today, I'm just going to show that up to the camera because I, I noticed this. Um, I can't remember. I think I saw this on the Wikipedia page, and I was like, <laughs> that's dope. You know what I mean? Um, what was the what was the inspiration for yeah. that? The story, there's a real good story behind this poster as well. Because oh, yeah, the guy who done this poster is a legendary artist called Graham Humphreys. Yeah. He did the original Evil Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street posters no from Dusk Till Dawn, Brain Dead, loads of classic Classics. movie posters. Yeah. And I, me and my brother literally had the original Nightmare on Elm Street poster that he did in our bedroom. And we were like eight and my brother yeah. was like 13. So we had that poster in my room, and then all these. That's years not the later, one with the claws over. Yeah, the yeah, that's that it, one. yeah, that yeah, one. That's so that's, like, that's the one that Graham done. Iconic, iconic poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I managed to track him down, and I said, "I'm a huge fan of your work, horror films, and all those old school like classic illustrations." Yeah. And I, I showed him Rashan Turks. I said, "We haven't got a budget," but he, he said, "Send me the film." He looked at the film, and he said he loves the film, and he said that it was unusual for someone to come and approach him because he's a horror horror artist. Yeah, yeah, totally. So to approach him with a so-called urban film, he. He was, you know, and then he saw the film and he said he loved the film and he, he would put it together and he created this, which was like kind of like a dream come true, it really was. W would you say that embodies the the feel of the film? Totally. He got it right. He got it Completely. just right. Completely. Spot on. That's amazing. Spot on. I suppose because that was, that was him kind of getting to try something a little bit new as well. Very Absolutely. Way, so, so enthusiastic. And he's a sharp guy. He got it straight away, you know, like yeah. even with Terrell's character with the sunglasses coming down and the cheeky smile and the swagger. He just... And then the character, the dark side with these characters in red and stuff. He, he, he got it straight away. He loved the pro. Film, so. Just an absolute pro. Yeah. Well, once again, man, thank you so much for coming down. Um, I wish you the best of luck with all of it. Thank I hope this film is, is, is well received as it deserves to be. And yeah, thanks for coming down, man. Thank you. Make sure you all go and support the film. Go and go and see it at these various viewings, and, and we'll catch it on TV when it when it premieres on there. Um, we're going to be getting into the mix very very soon. But first up, I'm going to play a Throwback Thursday track of the week. And um, given that we're talking about you know like uh, UK films and, and homegrown talent in the in the world of cinema and all that, I thought it'd be it'd only be right to play something from a classic. Um, classic British film, Kidulthood. Also, we're getting ready for the sequel, which is coming out real, real soon. Are you particularly excited for, for, for Brotherhood? Or what's, where do you stand on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I saw the Brotherhood trailer and, um, you know, the only thing is I didn't feel like it was branching out anyway from the original, you know, yeah. films. And, yeah, no, I, I, to I, to I totally get what you mean. It'll be interesting yeah. to see. Because that's the thing, like, these characters are so old now. It's like, <laughs> yeah. there's so much you, you could do with them, so many places you could take them. So. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. We're, we're praying. Hopefully, and that kind of goes back to what I was saying about taking those chances and kind of you yeah. know, pushing the boundaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing about uh, Noel Clark is that he, I mean, he believes so much in 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 that. So you know, you'd hope, hope one way or, or one way or another, he's going to do it justice. And you know, it comes from a very, very honest place. Um, but yeah, we're going to play one of the songs off of the the soundtrack of the original film. Uh, this is a song I haven't heard in ages. It's by the incredible rapper Akala. Um, and it's a song called Roll With Us. So if you haven't heard this before, I hope you enjoy. Roll with us. Uh, get rolled over. It's up to you. It's my time.